Preserve in St. Petersburg. She's going to talk about the reptiles in Boyd Hill Nature Preserve, and you're going to learn about why reptiles are awesome and getting an up close look at their unique characteristics and meeting some reptiles at Boyd Hill Nature Preserve. Welcome and thank you for being here, Amy. Thank you. Um, so my name is Amy De Palma, and I am a ranger here at Boyd Hill. And if you've never heard of Boyd Hill Nature Preserve, we are a large city preserve on the south side of St. Pete that offers six miles of walkable trails for you guys to actually walk um, and see a bunch of different habitats and wild animals and what Pinellas County was supposed to look like before we actually moved in. Um, we also offer a ton of different programs like camps um, and nature hikes. Those will all restart hopefully November 1st. So if you've never been to Boyd Hill, I want to invite you guys to come down here and see some of our cool animals and plants um, and why I love Boyd Hill so much. But today we're actually going to be talking about reptiles. Now, when pe most people think of reptiles, they're like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to see them. I don't want to see any snakes or anything like that. A lot of people are pretty fearful of reptiles, but I want to talk to you guys today about why they're awesome, show you some cool animals, um, and hopefully by the end of this, you'll be a little bit more loving towards our reptile um, populations. Now, what is a reptile? So a reptile is a lot different than us as mammals. So in order to be a reptile, you are a cold blooded animal. So if you guys all take a second and take your hands and kind of put it under your armpit or in between your legs, you'll notice that it's very warm. Now as mammals, we create our own body heat. And with that body heat, we do things like digestion. So when you eat your healthy food that you watched before with Healthy St. Pete, um, our inner body will heat it up and will actually allow us to digest. Now the animals I'm gonna show you in a little bit, they are cold blooded. So their bodies internally do act don't actually make, create their own heat. So they have to get their heat from an outside source, whether it be the sunlight or um, a hot pavement, um, or hot rocks. So they need to be able to go out and warm up in the day, and then they can go out and perform their functions of life, like moving around, eating food, breathing. Um, so that's why it's really important for these reptiles to be able to have natural areas where they can sunbathe. Um, so not like us on the beach where we're just trying to get a tan. These guys are doing it so they can actually be able to live. Now, there are, um, they also have, unlike us, we have nice skin, we're mostly covered in hair. Um, reptiles are covered in dry, hard uh, scales that they use for protection as well as some of them to be able to move around. Now, there's four types of reptiles out there. You have your snakes, your turtles, um, your alligators or crocodiles, and then your lizards. So throughout the rest of this program, I'm gonna actually show you some of our um, program animals. So these are animals that we take throughout the county to teach you guys about these different species of reptiles. Um, also, if you come and see us, we have a live animal viewing area where you can actually come and visit these specific animals. So um, before I get into that though, I just wanna to talk to you guys about why reptiles are awesome. Now, the biggest thing is they are living dinosaurs. I mean, you can't get any closer to a T-Rex or, um, or any other dinosaur when um, besides looking at our common modern day reptiles. They're really, really prehistoric looking. Um, they're really cool. Um, most of them are also born from an egg. So, and when they hatch from that egg, they are fully functioning animals. Most reptiles actually do not have parental care. Now, if you think about us, we're normally with our families until what? We're at least 18, maybe even longer. It takes us a long time to be able to function on our own. Whereas um, uh, most turtles um, and lizards will come out of their egg, mom and dad won't be around and they will go out and they will naturally go out and hunt and on their own and take care of themselves. So I think that's pretty unique and pretty awesome about reptiles is they're really good at surviving. Um, you also can find them pretty much all throughout um, the globe or earth. 
um, from the deserts to jungles and everywhere in between besides those really cold places like in the Antarctic areas, because again, they need outside heat sources to be able to perform their functions of life. So you might not find them in those poles areas, but everywhere else in between, you can find some type of reptile. Um, they also play a very important role in our food web. And we're gonna talk about that when I bring out my first guest here. So hold on one second, I'm just gonna grab him. And while Amy is grabbing her reptile, I just wanna remind you, you can ask questions throughout the presentation by uh, clicking the button below the video. All right. Yes, so first I have is our corn snake. Now, um, his name is George and he gets that name because he is very curious. So we named him after Curious George. Um, what you can see him kind of doing right now is he is sticking his tongue out. Say hi, George. <laughs> um, do you guys know what George is doing when he's sticking his tongue out like that? All right, so he is actually smelling. So with us, we use our nose to be able to breathe, but then also to um, smell different smells. Um, snakes use their tongue to do it. So what they do is they stick that tongue out, they will collect particles in the air, and then they push it to the roof of their mouth, and that's actually how they can smell. So when they're looking for their prey items, which for snakes, they're carnivores, so they only eat meat. And for these guys, they're gonna be eating mice and rats. Um, that's how they smell where their prey is near. Um, so George is a corn snake and they get the name because if you look at his belly, that black and white checkered pattern kind of looks like decorative corn that we normally see around um, Thanksgiving time. But if they are living in cornfields and they are carnivores, do you think they would be actually eating the corn? So no, right? So corn um, is a vegetable, so they won't actually be eating the corn, but they love to eat the animals that, um, that eat the corn, like mice and other rodents. And for a while, farmers were actually killing the snakes. They thought they were bad. And a lot of people are afraid of snakes um, for a number of different reasons, um, but they were killing them. They thought they were bad for their crops and they thought they were dangerous, um, but they actually weren't. And what they were doing was what they found is when they were killing all of their, um, all of their snakes, they were finding an increase of population of their rodents. And what happened was they had to start using pesticides and rodenticides to kill those animals. Now, that's not very healthy, is it? So a scientist talked to them about actually increasing their snake population. Um, so that way the snakes can actually eat all of those rodents. Um, and then they wouldn't have to use harmful chemicals um, on their vegetables and in their produce. So it actually, it made it safer for us to eat those produce. And then it also made it really great for the snakes to be able to live. Now this snake here, um, what I wanna talk briefly about with snakes is there's two different kinds. There are your constrictors um, that will wrap around their prey and squeeze it um, until it dies so they can eat it and swallow it whole. And then you have your venomous snakes. So your venomous snakes are dangerous to us, um, but they still play a really important role in that food web. Now, I always get this question, is that snake poisonous? So I just wanna talk to you briefly about the difference between venom and poison. So venom has to be injected into you like being bit by a snake or a spider and poison you have to actually eat. So like a poisonous plant. Um, so that's the difference between um, venom and poison. Um, and I would not be holding a venomous snake for you here. Um, so snakes are pretty misunderstood, but you see how cute he is. Look at George <laughs> saying hello to everyone. So I'm gonna put George away and I'm actually gonna take out my next snake that looks a lot more dangerous than he is. Right. So this snake is a cool little snake. Now this one also a constrictor. 
Um, this is a Western hognose snake. Now he looks very different. Has anyone kind of seen this pattern before? So if you said an Eastern diamondback rattlesnake, you are correct. And that is on purpose. So he mimics an Eastern diamondback rattlesnake colorization all the way down to it looks like he has a fake rattle, but it's actually just a different color at the tip of his tail. Now, why would you want to look more dangerous than what you actually are? And that is because they don't want any predators to bother them. So if you look like you can kill, kill you like a venomous snake, um, no one would want to mess with you, right? But for them, they actually don't have any venom at all. Um, and it's really funny with these snakes is you guys can actually Google it after or YouTube it. Um, type in Western hognose snake playing dead. And that's right, they will actually go and play dead. So this snake will be slithering around on the ground and when it feels threatened, um, it'll stick its tongue out and flip over on its back and will play dead. And scientists actually that are studying them will try to flip them back over and they will be like, no, 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 no I'm dead, I swear. And then we'll flip themselves back. So it's really cool and really uh, cute, um, these little Western hognose. So if you look at his little snout or how they get their name hognose, is this nose is actually turned up. Those are scales on his face that are turned upward like a pig, it looks like a hog. And they use the, that turned up scale to actually dig into, um, into the ground and um, go into low burrows. So that's our Western hognose, our mimic of a diamondback rattlesnake. So next I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about a different type of reptile next. So the next reptile I want to talk to you guys about is probably one of my favorite reptiles ever. Um, and that is the um, Florida box turtle. So unlike your snakes that have no legs, these guys have your four legs and they're known as a box turtle because if you see right here in this line here, this is a hinge. And these box turtles can actually close completely in their shells for protection. Now, this is our captive uh, box turtle. So she's eaten quite a bit of food. Um, so she doesn't fit in her shell as well as some of the wild um, box turtles are. Um, but if she felt threatened, she can seal herself up in the front like this or in the back. So any predators like raccoons, um, cannot actually eat her fleshy part of her skin. Now, the big thing with turtles that I wanna to talk to you guys about is when we think of shells, we think of seashells, right? And a lot of those animals will, um, will move from shell to shell as they get larger, but um, turtles actually grow with their shells. So if you see this yellow stripe that goes down its back, underneath the shell, is that's actually their vertebrae. So if you feel on our back, you'll feel there's bones going down from our neck all the way down. Um, that's the same as them, and this is in their shell, and the shell will grow with them. So when they first come out of their egg, they're only about the size of a half dollar, and then will grow to full size. Now, these guys live for a very, very long, long time, um, at least like t uh, 10 to 20 years of so long living turtles. But the big thing too, when I show this turtle is a lot of people think of turtles, they think of the ones that we see in lakes and ponds sitting and basking in the sun. Those are called basking turtles. Um, things like the sliders or the cooters. Um, these guys are upland turtles. So they live in more of a pine flatwood habitat where it's really dry and they will hide underneath all of the pine needles. So the way that you can tell the difference between a land turtle or tortoise versus a aquatic turtle or tortoise is if you look at their legs. So let's see if we can, if she can move her leg out. So you'll notice they're more like claws, right? They're, they're not webbed at all. Same with this, they're her front feet. They're not webbed. So they're built to be able to dig as well as to walk on land. Whereas our next guest I'm gonna show you really quick have webbed feet. Um, so they can actually swim and they spend most of their time in water. So my favorite of all time, our Florida box turtle. Look at how cute they are. Um, they are our upland turtles right here. 
All right, let me just grab the other turtle. All right. And if you guys come to Boyd Hill on the weekends, um, we normally have what's called a creature feature um, where we will have um, some of these animals out for you guys to actually see up close and, um, and touch and feel. It's a little different doing it virtually because um, I would have you guys touching a lot of these things. Um, but for here, I want you guys to just have to visit us and see. So this is called a musk turtle or also known as a stink pot. But you'll see the difference in her feet. You'll see that they're actually webbed. So that way she could swim um, very well. So they're called a stink pot because, so unlike the box turtle, she can't go completely in her shell. It doesn't seal. See, there's no hinge here. Um, so she doesn't seal up. So their main defense mechanism is they will actually let out a very stinky musk when they feel threatened. And most animals don't want to eat things that smell bad. So um, that's their main um, defense mechanism is they'll musk and then they'll scurry away into the mud um, so that way their predators can't get them. But, so this is our um, musk turtle, or also known as a stink pot. And you'll find these on the bottoms of um, lakes and rivers. Um, they love being in more of that shallow water. So I'm going to put her away. She's not normally out for our program, so she's like, what is happening? <laughs> so I'm going to put her back here. All right. So turtles are really cool. Um, and really important in our habitat. And a lot of people, especially in the pet trade, they want turtles. Now, I wanna caution you ever to get a turtle um, for as a pet, especially more of those basking turtles like I talked about before. Um, they live a long time. And because they need such specific light requirements, they do not make good pets. So when you see them at the pet store and they're only this big and oh my gosh, look at how cute this aquatic turtle I want it they don't make really great pets they get big they can double to triple in size and they need really specific lighting if they don't get that lighting their shell will actually concave um, and they won't they'll get very sick so I really caution you about getting turtles as pets um, and then same thing with the tortoises <coughs> excuse me with the tortoises um, they get really big and they live a long time some of these tortoises, like large tortoises, can live 100 to uh, 50 to 100 years. So, <coughs> so please be careful with picking animals as pets. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a tickle. My allergy started. All right. So, the last one I want to show you is our green anole. <coughs> All right, so I took his hide away so that way you can actually see the lizard. Um, so we're really used to seeing the brown ones running around our habitats in Florida. Now the brown ones are actually what we call brown or cubitinals. <clears throat> they are not native to Florida. And these ones are what we call a green anole and they are actually native here. So the brown anoles, <coughs> don't actually eat the green anoles, um, but they take up all of their resources so they can't survive in their natural habitat. So your green anole, you see here, he's very green, um, but they can get to a brown. Um, but you'll notice his mouth turns into a point. So that point there is what, um, it's more rounded. Um, that will show, tell you that that's actually a green anole versus a brown anole. So they get out competing by the actual brown anoles that we see around our houses. And um, so we really also need to be careful about releasing exotic pets into the wild. Um, you know, Florida <coughs> being a subtropical area, a lot of things survive here in Florida. So when you get some of those exotic um, reptiles that are not from here and you release them outside, they can really take over our native populations and push them away. So again, be very careful when you look at these animals as pets. 
um, even though they're really cool, um, they can really affect our nat uh, natural habitat. So um, these are just some of our reptile species here. Um, again, we have that alligator crocodile um, in uh, alligator crocodiles are in the reptile categories. I don't have any in captivity, but you can actually come to Boyd Hill and walk our trails and see some of those really cool large um, alligators here. So that's kind of my reptile presentation. I want to thank you for letting me show you some of my reptile friends. I hope you guys, you know, learned a little something and don't think they're as scary. Um, and yeah, if anyone has any questions, I'm here to answer. Thank you so much, Amy. We have a lot of questions. We'll try to get to all of them if we can, but if we don't answer your question, we'll, we'll maybe try to connect you with Amy. Yeah, and if not, you can always come down to Boyd Hill for our creature feature and you can actually, you know, interact with us here. And Mrs. Selechi wants to know if her fifth graders come, can they meet George the corn snake? Absolutely. George is here so you can see him. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read off some of these questions from Razi wants to know, are salamanders afraid of light? Afraid of light? I wouldn't say that they're afraid of light, but salamanders actually fall into a different category. They're not technically a reptile. Um, they're actually an amphibian. Um, so they fit more into the category as frogs um, than actually um, reptiles or lizards. And Will wants to know, what do the animals do at night? Ooh, so like our specific program animals. So our specific program animals at night, um, most of them are actually a lot more active during that, you know, crepuscular times as the sun's going down. Um, so I've seen them moving around um, in their enclosure. Um, it's really cool. And George being as curious as he is, um, he's actually ex escaped a couple of times and he moves around the most at night. So we've found him in our ceiling tiles. We found them all over. So um, he's very, very curious. So again, when you get reptiles as pets, make sure everything is secure and locked up. <laughs> okay, great. Tristan wants to know how a reptile born. How are they born? So um, the mom will, you know, depending on the species, a lot of them will dig holes and they'll lay their eggs in those holes and cover them up. Um, so that way no predators like raccoons or other animals can't get to them. And then they'll hatch out of their eggs. They have what's called an egg tooth um, that they have when they're babies and that will help them break open the, the shell of the egg. And then they'll all climb out and go over. And then the egg tooth is gone after um, they've gotten out of the egg themselves. Cool. Carson wants to know what the snake smells like. What it smells like? So our snakes, that's a great question. Um, our snakes themselves, um, they're pretty docile around us. So I wouldn't say that they have much of a smell. They have kind of like a I guess like an animal smell slightly, um, but some of them will musk when they feel threatened. And that's a really kind of stinky, like um, like a really bad, like um, like fart smell kind of, when you're like, ooh, <laughs> but they do it on purpose. So that way their predators would drop them. So that's only if they feel threatened though. Good question. Andrea and Alanis would like to know if reptiles hibernate in the winter. So some do, depending on where you are, um, they will go down into dens and they will hibernate. But here in Florida, since we don't have a whole lot of cold snaps, um, we might have like quick couple of little days. Um, they don't really go into like a full hibernation, like what you think of as like a bear will go into full hibernation. But some of them will um, go hide and be more dormant or more um, relaxed. They don't want to use a whole lot of energy. So they'll kind of just be chill in a corner until it warms up again. Okay, let's see. So many questions. I know we're not going to have time to get to all of them. Um, <laughs> Excuse me, my allergies have, are acting up out here. Let's see some questions about the turtle. Uh, <coughs> Annie wants to know, can a turtle get out of its shell? No, so the turtle actually grows with its shell. So a lot of the times when turtles, you know, get hit by cars or other, they have a lot of damage to their shell, it'll actually kill the turtle. So 
That's why you have to be really careful um, with turtle shells. You can't break them um, because it'll actually kill the turtle because that turtle shell is attached to their vertebrae. So it grows with them. It's part of them, just like our fingernails grow with us, their shell grows with them. Okay, I'm going to have one last question, which I think will be a nice promotion to visit Boyd Hill, which is just what time are your creature features? So they're usually at 2.30 on Saturday and Sunday. Um, they should be starting back up November 1st. So the month of November, they'll start back up and you'll be able to talk with a ranger like myself or a volunteer. Um, we'll have one of these program animals out for you to touch and talk about um, and ask all of your questions. We also have a ton of different programs. And if you are interested in reptiles, um, we offer summer camps that are specifically all about reptiles. For an entire week, that's all you talk about are reptiles. Great, thank you all for your questions. And thank you, Amy De Palma from Boyd Hill. And go down to Boyd Hill in November and visit her and ask her all these great questions and see the reptiles and birds in person. So thank, thank you so, so much. much.